Um, we're going to start, the, there's a two part to this PowerPoint presentation, two pages. There's a page one and a page two. Okay, on a serious note, um, Box Elder. Um, anybody know his proper, proper name? Acer Nugundo. Uh Where does the term Box Elder come from? Yeah, where does the term box elder come from? Terry Island. Okay, no, it didn't come from Terry Island. You're going to learn something tonight. Uh, the box comes from the word box wood, and elder comes from, because the sapwood in the bo and box elder and the sapwood in boxwood looks very similar. The elder comes from the fact that the leaves look similar to the elder tree. But other than that, they have nothing in common except that they are wood. What's an elder tree look like? The leaves on the elder tree and the leaves on the box elder look well, similar. Look, what's an elder tree look like? You know, you're uh, comparing something I'm not real sure on. I am positive. I did not have to go look. Uh, uh, okay. The leaves look similar. Okay, but the elder he is heckling. But the elder tree, the only thing it has in common with box elder is there are wood. That's it. That's it. Okay. So uh, now back to the fungus. I did uh, real quick research on that. Uh, the flame has said they come from fungus, but they really can't really prove that. Uh, some people believe it comes from the stress of the trees under, uh, other things cause it, and, and a couple groups have tried to go test the, the uh, wood for um, inducing uh, the fungus into it. Because you'll see some of the uh, flame color on box elder where you don't have any uh, bugs, which would ca cause part of that fungus. All right, so tonight we're gonna start off with page one. Uh, we're gonna do ball openers and if you've got <coughs> you have out in front of you uh wood selection uh any of the hardwoods work pretty well uh i did use my first one i made i made out of olive wood not that uh that has influenced some of my designs over there uh they're a little beefy on the front they split on me after i made the thing and i have split the uh, olive wood uh using them in um, ball stoppers but any hard work 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 pretty good. I've got a little Osage orange. They will take a little bit of texturing. Uh, layout and mounting. This doesn't spin true. I don't know whether it's uh, my chuck or this. But normally I take and just uh, take a one and a half by one and a half by anywhere from three and a half is a little tight. Four inches up to ten or twelve. Four fits uh, will fit probably in a guy's hand. Uh, chuck it up. After I chuck it up, then I will uh, drill it, and I have to have a kit from uh, Ruth Niles. It comes with a chuck and uh, two bits, 5 16 work. 5 16 will not work on Osage Orange. I tried to muscle some the other day, and it wouldn't go, so you need to go up, uh, what's the next one, 11 64s to make it work. Uh, I would drill this tonight, but this is off a little bit. I don't know exactly what's right, but I chucked this up about 500 RPM. Uh, check this down and then I go back in and I did bring some bottle hardware and you can always check it sorry I'm turning back check it depth wise I think it's about an inch about an inch and a quarter and so if you go down an inch and a half the length of the uh, flute you'll be plenty depth so I check it up now just a word of caution, the way I have it chucked up, it's only being held in four places. Everybody recognize that. That's not the best way to chuck it up. It would be better if it was round. But if you don't get too much speed on it, chuck it up around this end over with uh, either a spindle roughing gouge or a, a bowl gouge. And then I come back in after I drill the hole out and I take a um, spindle gouge in here to clean that up because that chucks up to my tool. I have three or four of these straight on. I've already put these on. They're, um, so they're a little tough to muscle off. Any questions about how it's chucked up and drilled? So what we're going to do is we'll put
Not too tight, just a little bit small. Then I like to put in tail stock or the one that I center up. I kind of have this roughed out a little bit. I've done some practicing. Uh, I don't know what your timeline is tonight. I do have extra uh, ball stuff as we're getting practice. So, uh, I've got this laid out. Uh, probably some, uh, I'll probably have a bead here and a bead here. We need to clean this up. And then I'll put a cove in. Now, who likes to practice beads and codes? Anybody? Back row? You like to practice beads and codes? Anybody? Nobody? So, I took a class recently and was told I wasn't doing my beads and codes right. Doing more of these. But, this is a way to practice beads and codes without practicing. You get something out where you're just not getting any wood out of it at all. Or, any wood. You're not getting a, you're just getting maybe some poplar that you cut in. So you could use a D-Way tool to cut these. All the ones over there I've used, uh, I basically use my spindle gouge. This is a piece of sycamore I have up here, I believe. Memory serves, yeah. And it doesn't hold as well, quite as well as say maple or walnut or Osage orange. But it will work pretty good for what we're going to do. So I'm going to try to demonstrate tonight. Try to, try to match these. Not the best. Okay, so my design is driven by the fact that some of this, a little rough in there, uh, my first one broke apart. Uh, some of it's just aesthetics, but the back part we're going to get on and we're going to demonstrate texturing, uh, the knurling, spiraling, and texturing. Now you can use a uh, point tool to open things up here. I'm going to set this apart here. And if you want to um, accentuate your um, beads, I don't know if you can see from here, we'll see. Basically this tool allows you to drop it in, give it a little more depth the back side of the uh, point tool. I think this looks a little heavy back here, so I'm going to take that down some. 
Okay, so these are knurling tools. Um, they work good on end grain. We'll work on side grain okay. Uh, we're going to do a demo back here uh, with the knurling tool. Um, these are, I don't know, 12, 16 teeth. I do have a lighter one, but uh, about 500 online. Uh, was, uh, center of the tool. Also do it on the uh, penny plates. It doesn't show up too bad. Oh, yeah, is this sycamore? No, it's maple. Or maple or birch, my mistake. So, it, it shows up okay. Uh, then we'll do... Texturing is with the tool that looks like a spur. And... Basically, you can get the effect Kind of an orange peel effect. This uh, evident I didn't get it. I, I skipped. Speed on it. Yeah, I'm not. I, it's hanging up a little bit. I'm not getting that what I want. It's supposed to give you an orange peel effect. I'm getting a tearing effect right now. In them. But this is uh, for texturing. And this is the spiraling tool. I've got the fence on it. And we'll use it to um, redo the bottom here. Uh, one thing to note on this tool, there is a little bit of play right here. Hey, Tom. Yes. Put it on the camera, but we can't see it. Where's the camera? Right here? Is that where just set it right on top of your work. There you go. Okay. There is a little bit of play in the head. So if you go real slow, you'll get a little bit of chatter. You might see it on one of those over there where the bottom quarter inch or so looks like it's double marked. Let's we'll see if we can uh, do something decent on this one. I've marked the two areas that I want to work on between pencil lines. Uh, the next thing to make sure is try to, and I, did, I didn't bring a, I have a file, but I'm not going to run out and get it. Try to make sure this is smooth. The next thing is, can you put a little bit of wax on it? Because that transfers to everything that you're going to carry over to the spindle. So I've got it set. <coughs> with the foot on 
and it's on the left. Can you see that over there? Is that you getting the camera? Okay, what I'll do is after I do left, then, and I'll do one pass, I'll rotate it, put it all the way over to the right. And you like the, um, you like the bigger one though, don't you, Barry? So we're going with our Presidente's likes. We're going to go with the heavier, what do you call it, snake skin? I say pine cone. I have this, we'll have this about, oh, that's right, we can't turn the switch off, so I need to, okay. Probably set it at about 1,200. And the reason I want to know what I set it at, I want to come back in on the other side at the same speed. So what speed do you run at? Well, I tried it, Craig, I tried it about four or 500, and it just chatters a little bit because that wheel plays a little bit. And they recommend between five and 600. But I practiced with it, and I wasn't happy with it. So 12 gives me a, a better, okay. I, I get a better finish. We'll see how, we'll see if we got it right. Uh, flat, come in, lightly get, touch. You'll hear it, you'll hear it if it skips. bad went a little long on those on the top let's see if we can go all right so I'll take it I'm gonna rotate it over if you want to make that deeper and you go back and go over it I would not go back over it uh, 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 trying to pick it up again uh, it's kind of uh, there's a chance you can see a little bit of it where it's where it's uh, where it skipped a little bit or didn't quite engage I have not had best, I mean, I've tried it backwards, but you're trying to, you're trying to catch us right on the money again. Right, okay. You can, I mean, if you're going to practice home, sure, why not? But I, I one pass. Um, I did not use these on the penny plates. I actually did it without the penny plates. Mainly because you're going straight in and we'll get it to them going straight in or I had a little bit more control I think than I do on spindles. So 1224, let's see if we can get it back up, see if we can get something that looks decent. Hear it? Anybody see here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I skipped. Let's see if we can, I don't know if we can save it or not. So you can see where I crossed over. So really what, to make this work, I'll have to go back, clean it up and um, then do it again. Uh, it it's not perfect going in there. Um, it depends the uh, the smaller one. Looks like here on top. Let's see if we can get a decent one on that. I felt it going across here, it rubbed, uh, 
shows up less so the uh, error is there any difference between the two this this came out I could probably live with it I would take uh, I'd run 320 on this uh, some people uh, Jeff and O'Burnish's Burnish, uh, I think the 320 is enough to uh, Without, but uh, removing some of it without taking out the uh, the detail. Uh, okay, so we've got texturing, spiraling texturing. Uh, hey, yes. Do you, I know for the beading, they don't. They guess you don't sand. Beading. No, like for the D way tools. Yeah. Um, I don't know. D way doesn't want you to sand it, but well, not, not D way. It's it's where I learned that Harvey ah. Meyer, Meyer he suggested. Yeah. Okay. Well, my only problem is I, I'm not making. I don't think I can get my cuts good enough. You can hide it a little bit, but I mean, if your cut's not smooth enough, it's only going to hide some of it. Yeah, you can get it pretty smooth. I mean, you're usually working with harder woods. Yeah. So. Um. I'll probably sand it to 120. I, I don't, you know, down uh, and. But it, but it doesn't affect your tools of sharpness, you know. Uh, no, because it probably over time. And, and Barry put this thing on today. I couldn't believe he put put quite a bit of pressure on it. I couldn't believe how he got a real in, good indentation. But he got this thing hot. I could. I have not got. I've not ever got one that hot. I mean, he wasn't in there a long time. You know, I don't know, 30 seconds. But that head was hot. He put he put a lot of pressure on it, and it was just at an angle. Um, You're not supposed to put any lube in them or anything. Well, sure. I think it probably needs a little bit of you. Oh, another key thing. Thank you very much. Uh, the bevel. You want bevel in coming up. Either coming in the bowl because the bowl's coming. Out. I want bevel first, and I really want this inside. This outside. Where's it going? His wheel's turning. It's going to unthread it. Now the big sorby has got. You can get. Uh, you can lock tight them down. They do sell these. I saw Hartville sells them for five ninety eight. But this should be on the inside. And in this case, I had the bevel down below meeting the tool. The bevel wants to meet. And and uh, coming in on plates, the this will be on the inside. So bevel into the wood. Uh, real quick. Let's see, that's that's terrible down there. So we'll just clean that up a little bit. They bring some D-Ways. Uh, they like to have speed on them, but you can use these to just set. Let's say we want to do, uh, let's just, I want to burn some in. I want to go. And I don't try to get it round. I'm just trying to get uh, parallel lines. I don't know if that any I brought have got let's see burned in. I'll just drop it in, burn it in. Um, I, I think that it adds to the uh, the look. So what you're doing is dropping the D-way tool in and not taking off that pattern, is what you're trying to say? No, I'm dropping the D-way tool in. Yeah, but I'm taking off the pattern and putting it already on there. 
Yeah, I did. I, I, I just, yeah, that pattern was terrible. It, it, it was, I should have cleaned off better, but that pattern went south. Hey, this Tom, one did better. Yes. Is that that tool up there you used to cut the bees with? Everybody can look at that. Okay. You don't need a handle on those. Is that a statement or a question? No, that, that, that's a statement. I prefer it without it. Yeah, yeah. The hat, to me, the handle is too big. Um, I, and the reason I borrowed somebody's at a class one time, I used them, and they said, well, here's a handle. I said, no, this is fine. I, I like the control I have with it. I became accustomed to it. So, um, sorry. Um, and then uh, you don't grind the tips, you just grind the back side to resharpen. You still see that? Uh, it comes in quarter, 3 16th, 8th. Uh, this is seven, approximately 7 16th. He has them $90, you buy two plus shipping out of uh, Tacoma, Washington. Uh, and you could do bees if you do want to practice doing uh, beads and coves. Um, let's see, we got through the Mica, uh, RPMs. One pass. Uh, hey, on the um, uh, on my uh, ball stuffers, I like to either use one and a half to one and a quarter diameter. When I get down, you can start with two inch, uh, but it you know you're looking at your customer. Is this going to be more for some of the smaller hands or some of the bigger hands? Uh, you have to, uh, you know, determine that. But I like between one and a half and one and a quarter. You can see some on the table. Uh, I left that there as, a, as examples. Any questions on the ball openers? Okay. I've got, sir. Do you find a D-Way beating tools to be the best? Oh, the best, uh, best at what? Better than the Sorby, better than the Crown, better oh. than the such and such tool company. Well, I mean, I, I think a B -way, uh, D way is better than a pair of dividers coming down here, just because all I'm doing is setting parallel lines. Um, over there, I'm pretty happy with with it in the plates, and uh, well, hopefully, I can get show an example of doing beads over on a plate. Uh, is it best? Uh, I don't know. It's what I've become accustomed to. If somebody came over and said, okay, try this out. Here's why it works. Let me explain to you why it works and show you, no, this is not, you're not doing it right. Doesn't mean I wouldn't switch. Yeah, so. Uh, I've used a Sorby and a D-Way and I like a D-Way much better. Sorby, uh, beating tool. Is that the one that comes to the point? Yeah. Uh, Tom's got a set, don't you? Yeah. Um, I've seen them. Uh, I, I just got used to these. All right, so uh, hearing no questions left, we're going to pop this off, take this bad boy off, and we're going to put into the uh, page two. Uh, if anybody wants to do a uh, ball opener, I've got a couple small blanks up here. I think they're birch. Not the ones that are done, the ones that are not done. Those two that are done are, um, they're down the learning curve. All right, so, uh, oh. here I like to get a piece of uh, warp word or something that's not too um, square, and maybe it's got uh, it's got character, or it's bottom of the tree, or where it's pushing to another tree. That that's what drives me. I, I've got uh, a couple of uh, walnut that have gone south, and they make uh, really really interesting patterns. Um, the the penny. The penny plate came from a request at near holiday times to uh, match a gift for um, the males in the family. 
and I had one, and so I uh, said, so well, we make a couple of those. What am I looking for? Um, and there's other ways to mount them. I'm going to show the way I mount them. Uh, this is not a, an endorsement for Jeff Hornug, but I had this, and Jeff had one, and I thought, well, he's got a hot rod, and I don't, so I had to get it. This is, uh, I like this tool because it's good for doing uh, boxes. It mounts in between here. Um, we could just drill this with 5 16th inch drill, put the, uh, that worm nut in it, and do it that way. This does allow you some uh, chance to do it this way without drilling a hole. Uh, I, take, I, I took the square piece, uh, I, I looked at this thing, laid it out, and I found the hole. I only want the hole in the back because I am going to put a tenon on this side that I'm going to reverse around. That tenon is going to be the inside of the bowl. Uh, I've got one cut here. I've got the tenon cut on this one. So I'll show you what I do to cut this thing. Uh, I have a one way, and I usually take this tip out. And here's why I take the tip out, guys. If the wood is real wanky or moves, I can move this around pretty easy without without putting a, a giant hole in it. And I would, now on a two inch, 12 inch plant I wouldn't, but on something this small, it's not, I, it's not gonna come off. Yeah. Less likelihood that it'll come off. It's so I, yes, I, I understand the error of my way. Okay, so I, I look at it, it's off a little bit. What's that? And the error of his seat. It's not coming off. Okay, so I look at this to see do I have it pretty well balanced? There we go. I like I like that a little bit better. Golly, what is there we go. Okay. I think the whole head is the head is the head around here? Yeah, the lever under it was Alright. So it's on this side. Where's the lever? That's the motion. Is it, is it locked? Is it locked? I think it's tight now. No, it's moving. It's still scooting. <clears throat> oh, man. It will never move it now. Well, getting acclimated to other equipment. Maybe it's mashing into the wood. Yeah. Um, okay. So, first thing I do, and, and this is a good example. It's, it's off a little bit. We see how it's this way a little bit and off this. And I just took a bandsaw, I took a rough, took a rough bandsaw. Okay, John, I don't think it's going to come off. We'll see. All right. All right. So first thing I want to I want to get round. Then I'm going to check on the other side, so I want to come back. See some tearing out. You also need to check the wood. Does it have a, a void or gap in it? You'll see one at the front of the table that had a gap and it wasn't checked until after it got turned or laid out. If you have a bad spot in it, can you lay it out? So this is going to be the back. Okay, this thing's got some massive cracks in this bad boy. That's all right. <laughs> massive cracks. So we'll still, this will be a good layout. We'll switch over. Pardon me? <laughs> Uh, we're not, well, I'll just show you how we're there. Okay, so I leave this set up. It's round. Um, you need to know the measurements on your chuck. This just chuck, uh, when it's closed down, is two inches, and when it comes down on a ten, tenon, it's one and a half. So I cut. I'll cut a tenon here about one and three quarters, and I'll show you. And then we'll turn around and grab it. And since I already have one cut, we'll just lay this one out. I didn't realize that. I didn't check that. See how much that, that dropped that down quite a bit. So uh, it's not flat. So what I might do would be do a drag cut to get it flat. Okay. 
Uh, that looks like about one three quarters. Which one am I closer to? Set some binders. Oh, well, wow. seriously. Okay. All right. So that's about one and three quarters. Everybody see on that? I'm going to come in here with. My parting tool, I'll come in here and about I can get up a little higher. So you want to put a um, dovetail in there, and so I have my dovetail. This is going to be the inside of the uh, plate dovetail. We're all done with laying that out. The magic of Stub center. The uh, flex point drive center, SKU number 9020, <laughs> seven eighths, and forty dollars out of your pocket into Jeff's gets you this at your house. Um, it's really good for boxes. Who? Oh, I asked um, a really good turner in Kansas City, Chip Siski. I said, "What do you do?" Chip puts in a drive center. Gets them around, puts puts the attendants on them, then he puts his uh, chuck on, huh. and he does reproduction work. So each his own. All right. So I put a notch in what I had here earlier. I have this one cleaned up. We're going to go back in here with this one, and I like to just and when I do it, I like to put a little. You know, a little tight. Make sure it's good. This, because I, um, because I can grip it. The mortise I got to expand. I can cut that tenon with two a lot easier than I come back and cut the dovetail. Because okay. as this one's coming in here like this, mm -hmm. I got to come back in here. I can't get to it from here. Okay. So, and actually, do you know what this came from? Anybody? Anybody? Mr. Schmidt. Do you know where this came from? I got over to Craig's and I was one step behind. I did not, I was working the back and, uh, of a plate about two, three years ago. And I should, and this is what, I'm one step behind. I'm trying to work this part of it. And the tenon allows me to face on this side, clean the back, we do the back, we finish it off, we flip around, we do the front, we're done. So that's what the tenon, you work from the front because that's where you're going to end up, not work, not start from the back because that's what the back needs to be, um, you don't have any way to hold it if you don't put the tenon or a mortise on the front side. Like I said, you could drill it. So what I do is I come in and I mark it about a quarter inch here. Uh, I have actually cut the recess back in here. I'll pull this back out of the way. And... Uh, I'm going to try to put uh, put a, a Roman OG curve in here, and I take my center spot. I leave a little bit in there to decorate. Uh, really make it really makes a nice little thing to decorate. And uh, back to where do you go, Terry? No, French Tim. Uh, you don't have to sand in here if you come back and embellish it. If you do it pretty, because uh, you just don't have to get that close. So what I'll do here is. I'll do a stair step approach 
to take this down. I think we. I've got marked about a quarter inch. It's not too bad out. Let's turn it on a little bit. It's out a little bit so I could come back a little bit. I'll probably come back to this line here. Uh, because when I turn it around, I will have to work the front of it. I got to make sure I have enough room. So I want to stair step this down. And you took Andy's class, didn't you? A Andy Gunning really likes stair stepping. And this is where I learned it. So. This is close enough we're going to get down here with Okay, so I kind of have an OG in it. I don't like this foot. It's smooth. I prefer to uh, have a, um, I prefer a step. Uh, I know uh, uh, Andy, for instance, he, he likes that curve. So I like to put a step in here. It just depends on what your, what your touches are. It kind of has a, not a bad OG. See? See the uh, step in it down and smooth. All right, so we're going to we're going to embellish. We're going to start with the learning tool. Needs to be on about center. We're above center a little bit. I should have cleaned that up. That would be okay. About 500. Um, I only went in about a sixteenth, uh, about an eighth of an inch. Now, keep in mind for that uh, recess, or, since I already cut it, eighth of an inch. Small plate, uh, under 1100. I don't know. It's not not going to fly off. You always have the chance. If you use the um, grit, your char grit, and you don't get it wiped out of there, and you get back on the other side and you start pushing, will it come off the uh, your chuck? The answer is yes, and more than once. So you have to be real careful because uh, uh, you're pushing on the other side by going uh, only going to empty. Uh, eighth of an inch in. Make sure it's recessed pretty good. I probably could recess a little bit more. Uh, but keep that in mind. The, the grit makes it really uh, slippery. So you got to really dry it out. Other, otherwise, when you go to work the other side, it'll pop off. That's based on experience. So I'm going to, what do we got? About five. Let's take it out a little bit more. 368. We're going to make sure the rest is back some. And that's not really wide enough. Let's get a wide one. So I'm going to put, I think that will work, yeah. <coughs> I 
don't know, can you, you can't see it probably, can you? Okay. It looks just like this. That one in the center. Is that on the camera? Put right over the plate. Huh? Put it right over the yeah. plate. Just, just, just hold, hold, hold it out. Hold it on right there. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So I rushed it a little bit, but that's what I'm using here. Pass that around. Please. Then I'm going to go back in again. Another tool. Then I'm going to go back in. I'll forget to take that off. And I want to texture this. So, I think Jeff uses a, oh yeah, I got to put the wheel, that's another thing. Okay. Is there a pair of pliers here? No? Uh, I don't yeah, know. Well, okay, we'll have to go with that one. Okay, so I'm doing this, no, I got it right. Okay. Jeff comes in at a 45 for his. I do a 45, let's see if we can get, get this kind of a flower, I'm around. I like about 400 center. This works better. I think it works better. I, I can feel it going too fast. Okay. I, I don't think you see that. Let's see you Okay. So I like to. Uh, I would. I would take some 320 and just rub that off. Move on. But what you really need to, to keep in mind is what this tool is for. Is uh, the uh, three-point tool? I don't know how people got there. Come on, come on. To um, Uh, get a three-point tool on there and to need a little more speed around 800 be careful you want on center it will skate and it'll throw you to the outside Chipped out a little bit, but uh, the um, point tool uh, defines the um, embellished area. Um, I did bring another tool with me tonight. Um, it's an elf tool. Uh, you can do a lot, lot with it. You're usually outside on the edge. It's an elf tool. Uh, elf. The elf. Decorating elf. Yeah, it comes with uh, two heads. You can get a couple more heads with it. Couple pattern you getting out of it? Well, I like the cone. There's a round, there's a cylinder, and then there's an onion. Uh, I still get the speed down some because you remember you're going faster on the outside of the the um, on your outside of your um, disc you're going faster than on the inside so 
it's at 600, so it's probably moving pretty good. We'll, you'll hear it. We could do. Usually un under the rim of a, a platter, I like to put something like that so you, when you grab it, you feel something. Um, on the back, we're going to do a little embellishing with this. Let's see if we can get this. Uh, Down around uh, 300, 400. Yeah, there you go. They got loose. So, because the wood is engaging here, I really need to have the. Um, turn this around. On the inside, it'll look like that fine. Let's see if we can do it here. Come up the edge. That's too much. So I'm not happy with the pattern, but you can get the effect of. I'd probably have to sand it off and, and redo it. So let's see if we can flip this over. And that's a lot to cut. What's that? The back side. Now, when you start to turn, you're doing mortise and you put that in the chuck. It's already, I already cut the uh, mortise in. Okay. It's uh, at about two and a quarter. Um, so if you're going to turn front, you'll, you'll go in that mortise and catch it. Yes. Once the back's all done. Right? Yeah, once the back's done. The... Um, the only thing is, since the back's done, I hate blowing a plate, but we'll... Well, you don't have to. You just, just well, but I want to show a couple things. I'll, 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 leave the, uh, I'll leave the tin on, but I'll clean this up. I'll show, because there's a couple things you can do. Okay, so I left some material in the middle to about every two in the world. Okay, three sixteenths. We got three sixteenths. Um, I really don't like this tool rest for this. Uh, when we're going to make it work, I would probably do this. Let's see if we can get this done. No, I can't get in there. It's too bad. Uh, I'd probably prefer to be a little steeper. Let's see if we can get that to work in there. Yeah, this is what we're doing. 
Too much, too much. Chippa, yeah, a little bit. Um, I worked it too hard, so it needs to be cleaned up in a little bit. Um, the D-Way tool should be about center, working it right here, about center where you're working on, and it likes speed, 15 to 2,000. Uh, Harvey, what's the guy? Tim said Harvey, Harvey something. Uh, there is a demonstration that he uh, YouTube has a good good demonstration of it. Can work work since we've got this flat. I'll show you one I like that I've got down pretty good. Too much speed. Not a great herringbone. I, I need to get warmed up again. But that's a that's to get the herringbone. Let's see if we can do it a little bit better here. Slow it down a little bit. Um, this is just practice holding at one position, flipping back over. I prefer on the plates not to use the um, training wheels, if you will, the training wheels. On the spindles, I have to. I cannot do it. I can't hold it because you're going across. At least this, I'm holding the place. On a spindle, I don't know how else you could do it. So let's see if we can do it a little bit. Get the speed down a little bit. Come back in here. Oh, well, and then one thing I like to do is I call it walking the dog. Okay. It's here, right? right we're about, right about here. Let's see if we can do it right about here. I did get some chip out and never probably have to go do it again but that's just uh, practice 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 um, I, I probably would not try to do something so wide I'd probably do something more like better than I did earlier. Put a little speed on it. Uh, it worked a little bit better. It's more of a kind of a staccato uh, sharp point. No, I haven't. Too big. The head's so big compared to a plate like this. Nah. Uh, something small like this. No. No. I just 
just wondered on what you were doing there where you're trying to get like an orange peel. Yeah. If it's a big tool, you can do a better job just for the orange peel. It might. I don't, I don't use this very much uh, on the pl plates, on the little ones. I have used it on the big platters. Mm -hmm. um, Is that the pointy one, like a star? Yeah. The pointy from both ends? The spur, right. Mm -hmm. um, I've used one where they've been, it's been under use quite a bit, so the tip is more rounded. Uh, I don't care for it, but I, I've used it with that, and then I've used the bigger head where it's just got the lines on it in, in, function, in connection with each other. So just, but no, the big, to me, the big tools wouldn't work here. Hard to get in and out. You gotta be back some control. Um, just the smaller tools are easier. Uh, questions? Uh, all right, before I go, uh, hey, uh, I, I really want to thank uh, Terry and Barry, uh, Paul Krautman, and uh, one of my first classes I took to get focused again was from uh, my embellished colleague, Harry Schmidt, <laughs> and uh, I just want to tell you guys thank you. I mean, uh, it's helped me be a better turner, and if there's no questions, that's all I have for this evening. I hope I, did we go over the past a lot of time? Uh, okay, so uh, I, if you have or you want to do a bottle stopper and you come back with a turn.